The COT era was weird. It also was between 11 and 16 years ago, so a lot of what defined that era can be forgotten over time. And today, I want to look into just how weird this small span of NASCAR history was. Because, well, let's get right into it. This was only a five and a half year span of NASCAR if you look at it. The COT ran half a season in 2007, and then the full season from 2008 to 2012. And if you think about it, that is a short, short span for a generation of car in NASCAR. The Gen 6 lasted almost a decade. The Gen 4 was well over a decade, as was just about every other generation of car when NASCAR knowingly had it and was switching to a different one later. Also, in this time, there was plenty of major changes. The look of the car changed majorly three times when you look at the first stage of design and the first run of it, the second little bit of it, and how it ended out. And it also represented a very polarizing split for NASCAR fans. In a lot of ways nowadays, it's still seen by the younger, newer fans, or somewhat newer fans, and the older fans that were around well before it. Also, you saw the upgrade in safety, TV changes, popularity changes at this time, and two different chase formats. So, how do we really break this up? Well, in my opinion, in three distinct eras of it. The first one of these, I'm going to effectually call the Wing COT, from 2007 to the start of 2010. This is really the opening of the COT era, and in looking at this, the opening of the car itself was met with some mixed reviews and more on the negative side of that mix, if I had to say. Many thought that this car looked terrible. They saw the front splitter and how it had braces all over it, looking like something that was barely connected at the front, and for many fans, they saw no reason of having such a obscure design. On the back, we had the rear wing, which in a lot of ways resembled foreign cars that was not making people happy at all, especially with the emergence of Toyota at the time, which was very unpopular with NASCAR fans. And overall, the car was compared to a brick. It looked boxy, square, and just didn't look like a race car to many people. It was a spec car. Every single COT, whether it be Dodge, Ford, Chevy, or Toyota, all looked almost exactly the same and only could be told apart based on decals that looked like headlights of the real cars. There was no stock basis for this and it alienated a lot of long-term fans who just plainly did not like this look. On top of that, well, many just saw it as too radical of a change and a time that would be defined by change for NASCAR. But how was the racing in this? Because that's the most important part. You can have lipstick on a pig, and as long as the racing's good with that pig, well, that's all that really matters. Honestly, in 2007, it was mediocre. There were two great races to start out with it, though. The Bristol race and Martinsville races, while not having the best of racing at those tracks, had great finishes. And the Martinsville race, I actually would say, was pretty good, even with rain breaking it up. And, really, it kind of went downhill from there. In 2008, though, it got terrible. I've been rewatching the COT era as of late, and I rewatched the 2008 season recently. And I, as a Dale Jr. fan, look back on rose colored glasses with it because, well, Jr. ran good for a lot of that season, so I ignored the glaring issues. Dirty air was insanely difficult going into 2008, and the racing showed for it. It was hard to pass, and more often than not, the races were mediocre or just downright boring. There were great races, of course. The restrictor plate races, especially at Talladega, were damn amazing. And on top of that, you did have some good short track and road course racing when the cars were able to be around each other, and aero didn't really matter too much. Richmond, actually, was probably the best short track of the season. But there were two glaring issues that season, and one of which had to do with a giant race. One of the biggest glaring issues was Goodyear tires. They just could not stay together. And 
because of this. A lot of drivers had their races ruined and seasons ruined because of it. And probably the biggest race outside of the debacle that we saw later in the season that was affected was Atlanta, where we had had great racing for well over a decade at this point, regardless of the configuration. Now, we're looking at pretty stale racing and tire issues. And of course, we can't go past 2008 without talking about the Brickyard 400, which pretty much killed off what was a crown jewel event at the time and really hurt the credibility of NASCAR. Now, going into 2009, the racing actually had gotten a bit better. They had finally figured out some of the aero issues, and it looked like, in a lot of ways, you could have at least solid intermediate racing, especially at tracks like Michigan and Auto Club, big two-mile tracks. All of this, though, in my opinion, was overshadowed by the biggest change of all, and that was a solidifying of Jimmy Johnson's dynasty, as between 07 and 09, he had won his second, third, and fourth straight championship. The biggest changes, too, in this time had not as much to do with the COT car as well as more what was going on off the track. In free agency, you had some big names and big car numbers and teams change immensely. Dale Jr. went from his famous 8 Budweiser car to the 88 at Hendrick Motorsports. Tony Stewart went from Big Orange in the Home Depot 20 to his own team in the 14. And Ryan Newman went from the Alltel Dodge to the Army Chevy at Stuart Haas Racing. None of these were bad moves in any way, but when you look at how people would view the greatest era of NASCAR, these were three of the most famous paint schemes and sponsor driver combos out there that were gone now. And then you have to add in the open wheel invasion headlined by Juan Pablo Montoya coming over. And while, again, not something necessarily bad, it still alienated a very pro-American base that NASCAR definitely had at the time. The emergence of Toyota as well did not help this either. Toyota, like I said before, was vastly unpopular, and many said it didn't have a place in the sport. So what'd they do? Well, in 2008, they flat out dominated the regular season and became consistent winners year in and year out throughout the rest of this era. Well, this in a lot of ways was reflected by popularity. On TV, well, it was down for the most part. Fox had great coverage as normal at the time, but TNT got progressively worse and ESPN was just really bad to start because they completely missed the mark, one, on what the people that watch their network would like with NASCAR, and two, what NASCAR would like with presentation. And this presentation did not help on top of how badly they treated NASCAR outside the initial broadcast itself. Attendance was down, and in a lot of ways, this was a natural progression down from the peak of 2005, but also the recession hit, hurting teams even more, as we'll talk about later. But probably the most important aspect that did change for the better in this point was the safety aspect, and it was highlighted by none other than Michael McDowell at Texas, who had a gnarly crash and walked away and was able to race later on. Now, this leads us into the weird transition period of 2010. From race six on through the end of the season, we had what I like to call the weird COT era. The first five had the wing, but after that, the spoiler was put on the back, but they still had the splitter up at the front. And I don't care how much you love or loathe the COT, this design just flat out looked weird and, in many's opinion, ugly. There's not really too much that was changing outside of what was already in motion from 2007 to 2009 in this season, but honestly, there was just kind of a serviceable racing season. This is probably the most overlooked of the COT seasons, as it wasn't bad, but it was not great by any means by most accounts. The outlier biggest change was because of the wing being taken off, we wouldn't have major flips like we had with Brad Kozlowski at Atlanta. And this was Jimmy Johnson's fifth straight title, which is something we'll never get to see again. So that in and of itself did make this a weird season as well. This all led into part three of the era, the end of it, the greatest of the COT era in 2011 and 2012. And the biggest change that many noticed immediately was the car. The front of the car was now closed up. 
No more brackets on the front. Instead, it actually looked like a race car. And with the spoiler on the back the way it was, and the way that the rear body had been changed to basically accommodate that spoiler, the car honestly looked really, really good. And some big changes in this year and 2012 as well was the wildcard playoffs, which in a lot of ways was a proto win in your in playoffs kind of deal. It was a 10-man chase where the top 10 in points would make it, and then from 11th to 20th, whoever had the most wins would make the chase. Honestly, it wasn't that bad, and we saw our first tie for a NASCAR championship between Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards, something under today's rules we will never see again. Honestly, though, the biggest change when it came to NASCAR outside of the racing itself was that the popularity had leveled out at this point, as there was honestly really good racing this season. And with it, 2011 kind of almost made NASCAR solidify into what it would finally become had they stayed with the COT past the 2012 season. Overall, there were some other major differences with this era that made it weird for longtime fans as well, as well as fans in the Gen 6 era on. There were less competitive teams out there. There's no other way to put it. Yes, a lot of the teams that had maybe closed down or had diminished in competition over the years weren't ones that were going to make the chase every year or even be top 20, but there were a lot more teams, especially from about 08 on back, who would maybe come up and get a pole or a top 5 or a top 10 and just have that crazy kind of weird good run. Some major teams from the past had closed or downsized as well, including Roush going from five to four cars, the 45 car of Petty going away with mergers left and right, DEI was basically gone at this point to Earnhardt Ganassi, Bill Davis Racing and Morgan McClure were gone. There were so many different changes that it was hard for fans to keep up, even if it was just lovable underdogs going away. And in doing this, the only way that a lot of smaller teams were able to survive was through start and parking, which had hit its peak in this time, with some races getting double-digit cars in their 43-car fields, basically starting the race and not even making a full fuel run before they parked it and collected a paycheck. A lot of sponsors left in this time, too, that were longtime sponsors, or they diminished in their support, so the overall look of the sport was different and just weird for a lot of fans, too, who had watched the last two decades. And you did also have a new track with Kentucky, but I think the biggest change for a lot of people was popular and good drivers struggling. Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt Jr. being the two biggest. Dale Jr. only had two wins in the COT era, even though he was relatively competitive in a lot of those years. And Jeff Gordon, while still winning almost every single season, had winless years and was just not the same Jeff Gordon that we saw pre-2008. Now, like I said, before and after, this stuff will seem weird. Yes, there were some things that continued on through the COT era to the Gen 6 era that were there before, and there were some things that started in this era that are just normal now, but it was a relatively weird time to be a NASCAR fan. So now I'm going to ask you, how do you remember the COT era? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or did you just find it mediocre or weird? Let me know down in the comments below, and while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support, and until next time, have a good one.